Hi, my name is Walter Emery and I am the founder of Airshaper. In our first video on fixed wing drone design, we discussed two-dimensional airfoil theory. In this video, we'll be looking at a flow simulation to see what happens when we move to more complex 3D geometry. So we want to start a very simple simulation, just a concept one, and I have a very simple file for it, a generic fixed wing drone. So I gave it a title, let's click next. And what we want to do now is to have it fly above the ground, obviously it's a drone, and to keep it moving and not static. Let's give it a velocity of 15 meters per second and to trigger some more dramatic flow, I want to rotate it upwards with the nose in the air at an angle of attack um, of 15 degrees. The model was done in meters and then just click the next button and order the simulation. It will now be put in the cloud and about four hours later we'll be looking at the results. Okay, we have the results now. Let's first relate them to the drag and lift theory that we saw in the previous video. This drone has a lift value of around 21 newtons and a drag value of around 5 newtons, giving it a lift over drag ratio of around 4.37. Now that's not very impressive compared to the values of more than 100 that we saw for some airfoils in the previous video. Let's have a look at some techniques to find out what is happening. A first relevant parameter is the total pressure coefficient. If we plot in 3D an isosurface of where this value equals zero, we can get a good indication of which parts of the geometry are causing a wake or a draft zone which leads to drag. In case of this drone, we can see that the outer parts of the wing are causing quite a big wake. To get more insight, we can have a look at surface friction and surface streamlines. Remember when we talked about flow separation and adverse pressure gradients in the previous video? Well, we can detect the outer edges of a separation zone by looking for low values of the surface friction. In case of this drone, in the top view, we can again see at the outer parts of the wing that we have a separation zone. In this zone, we can see the surface streamlines move in multiple directions, even opposite to the wind flow. We can also see this reflected in the surface pressure map. For a wing to function properly, we need high pressure at the bottom surface and low pressure at the top surface. In this case, we see that around the central parts of the wing, the air speeds up after the leading edge, creating a low pressure and thus increasing lift. At the outer parts of the wing, however, we see that right after the leading edge, the flow separates, rapidly increasing the pressure and reducing the lift. So let's build a few theories on why this happens. First of all, there's the airfoil that is used. At the center of this fixed wing drone, the relative thickness is much higher compared to the outer parts of the wing. Now airfoils with a high relative thickness tend to have a much higher stall angle of attack. You can see this when comparing the lift curves of for example the NACA 0006, NACA 0012 and the NACA 0080, which are basically the same airfoil but with a different relative thickness. The NACA 0006 already starts to stall at an angle of attack of 8 degrees, whereas the NACA 0018 only starts to stall at an angle of attack of 13 degrees. Another theory is the shape of this fixed wing drone. It's a blended wing body featuring a triangular planform, the shape viewed from above or below. The air first hits the nose, the bottom of the nose at the front, pushing it sideways. As the air bends around the nose to the top, it is pushed back by the surrounding air to fill the wake behind the nose and to prevent flow separation. This upward and inward pull of the air, however, can locally change the angle of attack around the outer parts of the wings, locally creating stall. So then how do we prevent this? Well, perhaps we shouldn't. Having some parts of the wing go into stall sooner than other parts gives the drone an overall smoother stall characteristic, making it easier to fly close to the limit. Also, the 15 degrees angle of attack that we used was quite severe, just to trigger some flow aspects that we wanted to see. It doesn't mean that this drone can't fly efficiently at lower angles of attack. So that was it for this video. I'm really looking forward to seeing your comments on these aero theories. And if you want to stay tuned for more, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also download the full report that we use in this presentation using the link below. See you soon. Bye bye.